Today's episode is brought to you by Quip. Quip is out there trying to help you get your teeth looking their best. Also, today we're brought to you by Ritual. Ritual is here for you to get your body being its best. We're, we're attacking you from multiple angles today. <laughs> I don't know if the word attack is right. We're coming at you now. I don't know if that's... You know what? Let's just start this podcast. <laughs> It's time for Ghosts and Friend Dog! Ghosts and Friend Dog in the morning. In the morning! Live, 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 live! In four hour recording studio morning. Recording! Wake your ass up! It's the Ghosts and Friend Dog in the morning! Hello, everybody! Welcome to the second episode of Ghosts and Friend Dog in the morning! Hey! Hey, how you doing? I'm doing all right. What you doing? I don't know what I'm doing. How you doing? <laughs> I don't know what I'm doing. Who are these two? <laughs> what is their? I don't know. What is hey. their story? Those guys, they suck. <laughs> They're kind of like British dudes, but they've lived in the Bronx for 25 years. <laughs> oh, what are you doing? I don't know. <laughs> don't know. <laughs> Just do that for like 10 minutes. That would be probably our most popular episode ever. It probably would, yeah. They'd be like, can they keep going? People would tune in just to see. Oh, we could. We just don't. <laughs> That's really sad. That uh, Yeah, we could. <laughs> yeah. Uh, That's the thing we would do. For our own amusement and no one else's. <laughs> it also sounds like an old person being like, first, get off my lawn. Yeah, you gotta have a little bit of old, like, old guy in there. Yeah. Like, from your gut. Oh, what are you doing? <laughs> oh, where's the Advil? That's also me, like, every week. <laughs> I was about to say. <laughs> uh, how's your week going? Okay, I can't lie to you. I'm not going to lie. I'm not going to pretend. I can't lie to you. Because this podcast is about honesty, right? It's about right. honesty between us. That's what I always say. It's about honesty. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So this past week, I had a lot of stuff to do during the day. Office things. Stuff of that nature. And it was just a lot. I had a lot to get done, and I hated every minute of it. So every night when I came home, I would eat an edible. <laughs> <laughs> All right, yep. And I'm going to let you know, I didn't do anything those nights. All week long, <laughs> did nothing. <laughs> That's what happened to me. Is I, I was like, you know what? I've been working really hard. I don't want to deal with anybody right now. And I went off to Fairyland. <laughs> 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 so that's what happened to me I um was kind of over it Just like a lot of business stuff And and then I uh, you know I got a message from the government That was like we need more money And I was like oh my god Why do you need more <laughs> They're like you didn't pay us enough I'm like I paid you what you asked And they're like but that wasn't enough And I'm like cool Alright Stuff <laughs> like that you know things, things of that nature Well I mean did you have any like high thoughts at least Uh <laughs> I did have a lot of like Jesse <laughs> sings to himself while just around the house. And I'm sure right. at the time it looked ridiculous, but it wasn't songs. It was like, but I would go for like an hour and a half. <laughs> <laughs> You're like the Nintendo Wii background music or something in yeah, your own head. Yes, if you would have left me on, I would, eventually I would have sold you a game or something. I don't know. <laughs> Somebody turn this guy off. <laughs> That's where I'm at. That's who I am. That's been my week. <laughs> well, <that's good. laughs> I saw you got, uh, you got locked out of your YouTube or something. Yeah, it was, um again... The reason why I went home and was like, time to turn my brain off. Basically, what happened is YouTube has a thing where if you log in from enough different computers, it will pop up like, hey, please verify yourself. Log into your phone. Check out your YouTube app. When you go to the YouTube app, a pop-up is going to appear. It's going to have a list of numbers. Press the number that's on the screen of your computer. And that's how we'll know it's you. But for some reason, every time I press the number... The computer version did not register it and would huh. just sit there. And so I kept pressing it and pressing it. I would reload and refresh my computer. And do... Literally a week and a half. I was unable to get into uh, my Cox Clips channel or uh, any of the other stuff we're doing on there. All I could do is upload to the main YouTube channel. 
Mm. But eventually, I couldn't even upload to the main YouTube channel. It just stopped me. And I was like, what the hell is going on? Contacted everyone I knew. And they were like, well, we'll get on it. I'm like, I, <laughs> I'm trying to upload these videos. I have half a dozen videos just sitting here. Like, well, we'll get on it in the morning. So that was night one of me being like, all right, I'm going to. I'm going to need something for this. And so I went home and I watched like weird ass TV and <laughs> was like, I guess I'll eat this gummy. And the next day woke up, expected something to change. Nothing changed. Finally, what ended up making everything change is I went in and deleted my entire cache, deleted all of my, like for, since the beginning of me using the computer, deleted everything that was in my Google sort of temp folders and fu- everything gone. And uh, then I went back in and it popped up again like, hey, you need to sign in and you need to prove it's you on your phone. So I was like, okay, signed in, proved it was me on the phone and it worked. And I was like, oh my God, yes. Then I go to the uh, upload page and it pops up again. And it's like, (laughs) you need to prove it's you. And I audibly screamed. (laughs) I was so mad. Uh, But this time, differently... Instead of saying, pull up your YouTube app, it said, hey, can we call you and text you a code? I was like, uh, yeah. Got my code. It worked. So I don't know what I did differently, (laughs) but it somehow let me through without it being like, go to your app. All I'm saying is that app to computer technology sucks. (laughs) I was there for a week. Like, (laughs) why doesn't it work? (laughs) So that was another one of my problems where, you know, sometimes in life you can't control things. Even though you really want to. And you stress out over it. And so I chose not to stress by flying high. (laughs) (laughs) That's a lesson for everyone. To get rid of your stress, just do drugs. (laughs) (laughs) You know. There's your lesson, kids. (laughs) Tell that to your parents next time they're like, be clean. (laughs) Listen, the parents, the parents are probably, uh, parents are probably doing drugs. Oh yeah, this day and age, everyone's doing something. Yeah, they're either drinking, they're smoking, they're drinking and smoking. Or you know what I uh, didn't realize till I was an adult? That mm-hmm. that actually is super true. Yeah. Uh, I, even though most people be like, I don't do the marijuana. They're, they're still on like prescription painkillers <laughs> and oh, opioids yeah. and things that are just like, because the doctor gave it to them, it's fine. Yeah, it's like oh, that shit's addicting. I know. I yeah, that's about what'll that. kill you. I told you about that when I got my gallbladder out. They gave me like forty of those. I did not need forty of those. They gave me forty of those, and I remember I took like ten, and I was like, yeah, I'm good, and I just saved the other thirty. So when I got my toenail pain, well, my just toe pain. I guess your toenails don't technically hurt. Uh. That hurt more than the gallbladder stuff. So I was like, ah, you know, I'll start taking these. Like, So I limited myself to like two a day. So I was like, I'm not, th- I'm not taking more than two of these a day because these are crazy. And so like, it got to the point where I was like, man, I see how people get addicted to these things. <laughs> like, yes. hey, like I got down to my final like three and I was like, I gotta save them. I gotta save them. These are great. And then like they were gone and I was like, oh boy. And then I was like, I just gotta I was like Gollum or something <laughs> with the ring. And I was I like, nope. Just get a few more. <laughs> Precious. <laughs> it's like, nope, I'm good. I always tell a story where I was playing Battle for Azeroth and I was in the auction house and I I took one of them and I was sitting there and I was like, dude, I'm having fun playing Battle for Azeroth. That's how you know these things are powerful. <laughs> <laughs> so that was, yeah, you know. And then uh, I haven't taken them since then. You just gotta you gotta know your limits. You gotta know you know where you're at. It's about but it, the. But uh, that takes experimentation and having good friends around to watch your back. That's a fact. And I think some people just have addictive personalities too. Oh sure, yeah. I, I mean, I think everyone is addicted to something. Yeah. I mean, it's uh, it doesn't even have to be like all drugs or like alcohol. Yeah. It can be literally like. Playing video games. You can literally be addicted to that. It's it's forming habits and those habits associating with, you know, uh, happier moods or relaxation or all that stuff. It's the dopamine, uh, you know, man. Serotonin. It's all your brain chemicals, man. Brain chemicals. But if anyone out there is like a shaman who listens to this, <laughs> I'm down to come out to wherever 
and have like a crazy experience, let me know. <laughs> I'm still waiting for my I'm one with the stars moment. I want it <laughs> badly. Um Oh yeah, I've been uh, been reading my Marie Kondo book again. Why? What brought this on? I'm sitting here well, sipping my 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 coffee while I listen to you talk <laughs> about Marie Kondo. It's very warming and welcoming. Well, that's good. Yeah. Um, what what you know what brought this on? <laughs> so pretty much it was literally a year ago I bought this book and was reading it and I was like, I'm gonna start organizing stuff because I was like, oh, this is inspiring when I read it. And I was like, I need to do that again. Because I've mentioned it last month or so. I was like, I want to organize. And I was like, you know yeah. what I got to do? I got to read that book. That'll motivate me. So I started reading it, and it started motivating me. So, one of the things... <laughs> but, but like, how? Wait, no, you can't... I read it, and I was motivated. Like, how? In what way? <laughs> I going to explain. Right, okay. So, one uh, segment she writes is that things like clutter actually uh, increase cortisol, which is the stress hormone. And so by eliminating clutter, you actually reduce stress. Because if you think about it, right, let's say there's like a pile of papers by your desk, right? And you constantly see that pile of papers. Even if you don't like consciously notice it, you subconsciously know it's there. And you're like, that's a pile of papers. It's the stuff like stuff I got to go through. You know, it's taking up space. It's something I got to do. And then when you finally go through it, that, you know, that thing is gone and it's just empty space. And you're like, wow, there's like, you know, I don't got to worry about that anymore, even on like a subconscious level. And so even just knowing where things are, like organizing, where you're like, oh, man, I need this thing, but I don't know where it is. But when you know where it is, you're like, oh, you know what? That's uh, that's one thing I don't even have to worry about, you know, on a subconscious level, because if I need it, I know where it is. So it's like and that the less thing. things you have, the easier it is to know where things are. Yeah, yeah. So it's like uh, it's like how you know she's made her her living from that. What's it called? Like the joy. What's it called? It's like this is spark joy, right? That's the mm -hmm. the thing. And so I mean, it is it is true to an extent, right? Because I mean, there's some things where I'm like, listen, this doesn't spark joy, but I'm probably gonna need it. You know, like what what is an example of, of that? <laughs> like I don't know, like a like a plug for a monitor. <laughs> I'm like, listen, if my monitor cord goes out, I'm probably going to need this. But there's a possibility it never goes out, and I buy a whole new monitor. But I still might need this. So it could spark joy in the future, but right now it's not sparking <laughs> any joy. Like, I don't know. So I was like, you know what, I'll keep it around. I love your it could spark joy in the future. <laughs> it's very, yeah. you know, like you're future-proofing your joy. I like yeah. it. I'm, a, I'm adding an addendum onto the sparking joy document. <laughs> <Right. laughs> <laughs> and so... Okay, yeah. he's running around. Uh, so, uh, where's I going with this? I don't know. I'm just Great trying question. to organize things because, like, I don't need everything to be like pristine and super organized, but I want it to just be like clean enough. That's what I'm going for. Even like my desktop, where I look at my desktop and I'm like, do I really need this like old Twitch download I downloaded or like this old thumbnail I have from like a month ago? No, why is it here? You get rid of it, because otherwise your desktop on your computer even looks all cluttered. Like, uh, or another thing, like, I've got, like, games here, I don't even like, I've got a, a desktop icon for, uh, let's see, Pilgrims. I don't even know what the shit this game is. Why is it here? I don't know. Did you not, this is not something you just downloaded and never played? Yeah. But it's, like, taking up desktop space, so I'm like... I leave it there because I'm like, oh, I might play it sometime, but I don't, and it just sits there, and then my desktop's all like, bleh, and I'm like, nah. So I want to like organize my desktop and then like even your your documents and stuff like that. So that's uh that's the whole premise of like her 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 book is just like cleaning all that up. Does she say how to do it in a way that doesn't stress you out? Because the reason why people leave a pile is because it's like stressful to think about going through it. Uh, well, you you gotta make it over that hump. <laughs> that's what it boils down. I feel like that's the hardest part. Where is she with that tidbit of information? Well, that's just you. Like, you gotta, as a person, you just gotta be like, you know what? You gotta, you know, go to get over the hump and do it. That's not helpful. That's not... Yeah, it is. <laughs> no, <but laughs> the hump yeah, it is. is the hardest part, and you're telling me, well, here's the tips to get to the hump. <laughs> now you're at the hump. Figure it out yourself. That's not helpful. Well, she does have the method of, like, gather everything up and put it in one big pile or something. 
so that way you've got everything, like, you get everything that's making the mess, where you're like, ah, oh, this is on the desk, this is over here, this is over here, and you, like, take it all, and you just put it into a big pile so you see it all, and then everything's clean, technically, and then you can organize. So it simplifies everything, because you've just got one big thing of all the stuff making a mess, and then everything else is clean. I guess. It seems like it's just now a giant pile of trash. Well, that's when you, then you got to go through it. Now you got a pile of trash sitting there. <laughs> <laughs> well, all right. And you might be like, oh, I don't want to go through this pile of trash. But then, boom, now you only got one big pile of trash. Everything else is clean. I'm, I guess. It sounds stressful. <laughs> <laughs> I'd rather do, like, little chunks. I mean, you can do little chunks if you want. Just probably whatever, whatever floats your boat. But then it's like a lot of little chunks, and it's overwhelming. But you just said you'd rather do little chunks. Well, that's but I don't. I don't think little chunks are overwhelming. That's oh, but if you have like eighty little chunks, that's eighty chunks. That's a lot of chunks. How are you living that's like that? That's what I'm saying. If you got like <laughs> you know a kitchen chunk and a computer chunk and a desk chunk and like a closet well, chunk and a bedroom, that's, now you got a ton of chunks. Just go room by room then. Do like one room one day. That's too many rooms. No, it's not. Do one week where you clean one room a day for like an hour or two. But that, but why only do that? See, I got to get it all done. Why? I don't know. <laughs> That's sucks. a you problem. Uh, no, shit. That's true. <laughs> a lot of my problems are me problems. <laughs> uh, but you're, you're already like a minimalist person. Yeah, specifically for this reason. People are people keep being like, Jesse, are you dying? Why are you getting rid of your stuff? And I'm like, look, I just don't want to have to manage it all. <laughs> like, I just don't want to deal with it. <laughs> it has nothing to do with like, well, I am not long for this world, so I must give up my worldly... Like, no, I just... I plan on living long enough to be over all this shit. I don't like... The less stuff I have, the better. I don't want things. I What's, want stuff, um, like, removed. That's, uh, like, the motivation thing. I was seeing a, what was it? It was, like, some YouTube video. I don't know. It popped up in my recommended on motivation and how the most successful people in terms of, like, conquering their, oh, I don't know. I want to say downfalls. Conquering things they need to do, right? If you're, like, you got to write a book or you got to finish work or you gotta stop doing a thing like oh I keep eating cookies every day I don't want to eat cookies or like oh I keep going to the bar every day how do I stop going to the bar and then you tell yourself I'm not gonna do it then and then you do it again right the way they fixed it was removing it entirely so the like the way things work your brain will work is that it tries to uh what's the word kind of rationalize what you're doing so you'll be like all right i keep eating cookies every day because i keep going to the grocery store on my way home from work so maybe today i'll take a different way home from work so i don't go past the grocery store right like that's the way you kind of overcome it but a lot of people will just be like all right today i'm not gonna go to the grocery store and then you drive by it and you're like oh there it is. I could go in there and just because you're starting to like you're you're giving your brain the ammunition to be like, yeah, 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 just one cookie. You only need one. And then you're like, yeah, I'll just have one and then eat one. You're like, mm -mm, but I could eat five. And then you're like, ah, oh, geez, I'm back at square one. It's like that with anything. Uh, So the or like, let's say you don't even want to play a, a video game, right? You're like, you know what? I'm tired of playing League of Legends. I'm going to stop. And then the next day you wake up and you go to your computer and it's just right there. League of Legends sitting there on the, on the desktop. And you're like, I could this just. This is a problem you have, isn't it? This is, this is a, <laughs> this is a problem. thing. Well, this is a problem I used to have. I don't have it anymore. Uh-huh. Yeah. And yeah. no, I watched you play the other night. So. Well, yeah. I've only played like once this week. I used to play daily. That was. It was <laughs> deteriorating my health. And so. Okay. It's now transferred to like Sam. Sam plays like 18 hours a day. Uh, so you can see it there and you're like, oh, I could just open it and you open it and you're like, oh, now nah, I'm in. I might as well play a game. So like if you uninstall it, you create those extra steps you have to take to be like, do I really want to go uninstall it? And maybe you go to download it and you download it and then you go to install and you're like, you know what? I'm not going to play this. And then you just delete it. So you like, you give yourself time to like allow your brain to make the choice you want it to make. 
is what I guess. So like in like for like the the bar thing, like maybe you're walking home and every day you walk past the bar and then you're like, you know what, I'm not gonna walk past the bar today, and then you eliminate that. It, it, I feel like it's a lot harder than than you're putting on here. Mm-hmm. Because well, there could is. be just another bar. There could be like you know you walk home and well, there's yeah. another <laughs> better bar. There could be the whole the whole point is you're trying to make it more difficult to make the decision. Sure. Right, because if you keep doing the same thing, your brain is like hardwired to be like same thing, easy. We do this, and it'll rationalize to yourself like do the thing, do the thing. Dopamine, serotonin, feel good, no pain, and you're like, yeah, no pain, dopamine, dopamine. Then you do it. I'm blown away by your you're so scientific today with your dopamine, serotonin. Well, this is like what I watch on YouTube. I watch all these, like, you know, pop science, like, learn some stuff. And I'm like, hey, I learned something. But if you want me to, like, go into details on studies, I'm like, I don't know. I'm like, the people, <laughs> there's the, some people will be like, oh, I've learned so much on the internet. I'm just like, listen, I listen to a YouTube video. I think I know something, but I probably don't. You are one <laughs> bad day away from being like, well, let me tell you what's wrong with vaccines. <laughs> I watched a YouTube video where this guy said, and I'm going to have to be here like, oh, my God. Listen, I got my vaccine. I got my Modernas. I'm gonna, we got, we both, we're the Moderna bro. We are. We're the Moderna bros. I like watching those types of videos, but I, I'm the person who like questions them. I'm, gonna, I'm like, is this even right? And I'm like, probably not, but I think I learned something. Well, it, here's the thing. It <laughs> sounds right. Yeah. You know what I mean? Things, <laughs> a lot of things do sound right. I'd like to base most of my crackpot YouTube videos on, does this sound right? <laughs> and if it sounds right, I'm like, yeah, I can believe that. But if it's like insane, I'm like, no. Nah. Yeah. Well, or if they show like actual scientific studies to back it up, it really <laughs> helps. Um, Not just like my name's Jethro, <laughs> and I'm gonna fly above the Earth to prove it's flat. <laughs> oh my God, he's done it. Uh, <laughs> I was gonna. What do you What do you watch on YouTube? Because it's funny because people come to me and they be like. What do you who what gamer people do you watch on YouTube? I'm like I do not watch like any gaming stuff on YouTube. You're making uh, me go to my history right now. So like uh YouTube history, here we go. Okay. The last video I watched was Career Day, an SNL skit from several years ago with Adam Driver. I don't know if you've ever seen this. Hilarious. Uh maybe. It's Adam Driver as an old man. Very funny. Uh the next video after that is Text Glow Photoshop Tutorial. How to make glowing text in Photoshop. That's another one I did. Uh, yeah. Uh, the video after that is the Pygmalion Effect um, by something called Sprouts. Okay. One of those, uh, like, you know, educational YouTube things. Mm -hmm. Full Powered Superman versus the Elite. Superman versus the Elite. I don't know why I watched that, <laughs> but I watched that. I watched um, a clip from Star Trek The Next Generation <laughs> where <laughs> apparently it's Picard and it's entitled I Ordered You to Lie. Don't know why I watched that. I don't remember watching <laughs> that at all, but I did that apparently this week. Uh, I watched the Warhammer, Join the Ogre Kingdom's Total War Warhammer 3 uh, Early yeah, Adopter Bonus Reveal. I saw that. Got that. Uh, and then... A mega ton of Final Fantasy XIV music that I was probably playing before a stream. Just a lot of it. <laughs> and uh, then I discovered that the entire full movie Riff Tracks, The Talking Cat, is available on YouTube. <laughs> so I, I, don't, I didn't watch it, but I definitely clicked on it because it's on my list. Mm. And then I guess I clicked on another Riff Tracks, Fairy King of R, full movie. So I guess I have that to watch at some point. <laughs> <laughs> and then the Channel 5 Utah Rap Festival video, well, which was, mwah, that was good. Yeah. Yeah. And, and that's what I watched this week. Those, that's all I've watched this entire week <laughs> on YouTube. Um, that sounds about right. Yeah. You, you've watched like literally like no gaming stuff. Yeah. I don't, right. uh, I don't, I play games all the time. Yeah. I have no time to watch other people play games because then when I watch other people play games, my immediately thought, my, I immediately think, I should be doing this right now. These yeah. people are busting their ass working. I should be working right now. That's the thing is it reminds you that that's the thing you do for a living and you should be doing it. And I'm like, I should be doing that. 
Yeah, yeah. I watch people's videos and see something that they did that I love or whatever. And I'm just like, oh my god, I should be. And that's the problem is I will immediately think about that instead of just enjoying my day or, or taking time off or whatever. So I'll watch, you know, random stuff. But most of the time, honestly, I don't use YouTube. I'll go on. Like I like discovering things without an algorithm telling me what I want. Mm. So I, I log, I, I don't log in. I unlog from Reddit and just like <laughs> surf through Reddit to see what exists mm. without being logged in. Just so I can see the unfiltered world. <laughs> and I'll let you know, it's fascinating. I see some crazy <laughs> stuff on there. I don't imagine. Whenever I open like Reddit when I'm not logged in, it'll be like, it's just something like, who do you think was the smartest person before you developed your brain? Or it was like, <laughs> what's the dumbest thing you hate about the internet? It's just dumb shit like that. And I'm like, I don't know. This is why I don't go on Reddit. <laughs> like, here's uh, the great example is uh, this guy posted, I saw Dune in theaters and absolutely loved it. Decided to order the book on Amazon. Four days later, this is what I received. And it's just an empty book. <laughs> it's oh. a book with empty pages. <laughs> and, like that kind of thing that's what that's that's what i will look at i'll be like yeah it's messed up dude <laughs> that is it i uh on my side i'm subscribed to david lynch theater um classic youtube what is channel. that what is, is that what is is that's david lynch's youtube channel where he called does david the, lynch theater where, where he does, does the weather, weather report. reports and the number of the day. I don't watch the number of the day anymore. I've gotten sick of number of the day, but I do watch the weather reports. And every Friday, he does his Friday thing where he's like, it's November 5, 2021. And if you can believe it, it's a Friday once again. So I watch that. I watch some like YouTube algorithm channels so I can stay up to date with YouTube. And they're just like, they've changed the algorithm again. They're doing this and subscribers don't matter. And they're like, all right, subscribers matter slightly more now. And I'm like, all right, all right. Um, I watch a bunch of Warhammer channels. I've got a physical therapy channel. <laughs> uh, let's see. I've got a, I'm still subscribed to that weird chiropractor guy. <laughs> loves to like talk about <laughs> crickets and stuff um uh let's see uh let's see what else do i got here uh i'm subscribed to donkey he's one of the few video game people i watch love me a, a good donkey video um review bra of course uh cox and crendor podcast good channel there could be better <laughs> um, yeah I mean, it's all right. <laughs> Heard those guys are, you know, whatever. Yeah. Uh, what was this thing? Oh, the the motivation thing I've heard is from the What I've Learned YouTube channel. That's what it was. What I've Learned. I don't know how, like, accurate he is or whatever, but, like, I watched it and I was like, I guess it makes sense. But he could be wrong. I don't know. It's a YouTube video. Uh, I take it all with a grain of salt. There's like some vlogger people. There's like uh, Force Gaming. Yeah, unsubscribe from that one. <laughs> uh, Got him. <yeah>. Em. <laughs> Got him. So, you know, like really, I there's like barely any uh, gaming stuff in my history. Oh, that's right. I was watching Chubby Emu. You ever see those? No, I don't know what that is. So this is like one of those. He's like a doctor, or like, I don't even know if he's a doctor. Like, I don't believe anyone. Uh, <laughs> but, like, he talks about medical things that happen to, like, these people that are, like, crazy. So, like, he has a man drank six glow sticks, and this is what happened. Or, like, a woman Wait, what ate... happened? I don't know. I didn't watch it. Or, Damn like, it! Uh, a muckbanger ate one gallon of pickles. This is what happened. I watched that one, though. So pretty much the pickles have so much sodium that her body was just like sucking the water out of everything and like she her brain was like swelling up. It was crazy. She's pretty much almost died. 
So don't eat a gallon of pickles, what it boils down to. Uh, there's like some guy that drank 12 energy drinks in 10 minutes and his body like freaked out. Uh, pretty much things that like a normal person wouldn't do. But these people did for some reason. <laughs> uh, there's like another one that was like, uh, guy ate two pounds of peanuts. What? <laughs> that... That is definitely how you get a peanut allergy. <laughs> right? Like, 100%, that's how you get a peanut allergy. Yeah, I don't... Let's, a student ate gas station sushi for breakfast. This is what happened to his stomach. That sounds like a bad nothing, idea. Nothing happened. That could have been nothing, too. Yeah, uh, that's, that's one of those things where it's like, and then, yeah, he, like, pooped later. The end. <laughs> uh... Uh, let's see. An athlete squatted 500 reps in 20 minutes. This is what happened to his kidneys. Oh, Jesus. Uh, like there's, there's some crazy ones in here. A grandma ate cookie dough for lunch every week. This is what happened to her bones. <laughs> what? What? <laughs> yeah, some of these are crazy. Nothing is the answer. Cookie dough for lunch? That's nothing. For a week? Uh, it depends on how much, how much cookie dough she's eating. Right. Well, lunch worth of cookie dough. <laughs> uh, right? Just like one lunch worth of cookie dough. Yeah, I don't know. I don't know. Oh, it I don't was think like these people uh, need to take better care of themselves. <laughs> <what I laughs> yeah. Think. A woman drank a liter of soy sauce colon cleanse in two hours. I think that no. lady died. I think I remember hearing that. That lady that. died. <laughs> For sure, that woman's dead. It's like, can you believe someone died from drinking a liter of soy sauce? Like, yeah. Probably, why would you do that? Yeah, for a colon cleanse. Yeah, no, she's dead. And like, it cleansed her whole body out of itself. I don't even, I don't even understand. This. I'm gonna cleanse my colon. It's like what? Like just to eat fiber. There you go. You've Not done it. Soy sauce. It is. <laughs> eat some fiber. Oh, there's another one. Some guy tried to do a metamucil colon cleanse. He like clogged his colon because he was just eating it. Like he was eating like a pound of metamucil. It's like what? Oh my god. That sounds terrible. Oh, yeah, it was, it was bad. <laughs> Why are you watching terrible videos? Your <laughs> like, videos, I hate what you watch. Once you see these, you're just like, I gotta see another one. <laughs> nope, <laughs> nope. <laughs> uh, and then uh, I found this one because I was talking to Benji about the Animal Crossing home designing because I got the new Animal Crossing update. Been very good. Solid update. And... The, whenever you decorate the animal's house, they're like, wow, thanks. And it reminded me of, you know, in those home decorating shows where they like, they park the bus in front of them or whatever and they move the bus away. Uh, and they're like, here's yeah, the house. Like, yes, exactly. Yeah. yeah, it's it's always funny when you can tell they don't like it. They hate it? Yes. Yeah. <laughs> they're just like, here's your new house. And they're like, whoa, that's interesting. And it reminded me of that, so I was looking up, like, when home decorations go bad. <laughs> There's, like, a whole compilation of them just being like, I don't like the house. This room sucks. Or, the like, The worst part uh, is, like, we're trying to stay under a budget of $12,000. There's no way I'd let someone redesign my whole home with, like, a like a mini budget for an entire home? Get out of town. Yeah. 12000 yeah. seems like a lot until you t for an entire home. Yeah. That's a, yeah, I don't know, so... I was watching those, and uh, that's that's pretty much my YouTube <laughs> YouTube adventures. Well, we know Crendor goes to YouTube for his crackpot science, <laughs> but if you want if you want real health information, right? <laughs> you should listen to us because today, let me tell you, we have got it going on today. Good health starts with good habits. Quip is here to make it easier for you. By delivering all the oral care essentials you're going to need to take care of your mouth. It's one of the biggest things. I cannot stress this enough. Having had way too many oral surgeries in my life for a myriad of reasons, uh, taking care of your teeth is important. And Quip is here to make sure you do so. The Quip electronic toothbrush is loved by over 7 million mouths, has a timed sonic vibration with 30-second pulses that you can, like, you know, get in there and do quadrants of your mouth split into four bits. So you get a super cool, like two minute clean. It's lightweight, has a sleek design for adults and kids. No wires, no bulky charger, no nothing. They have a new smart app 
where you can monitor and track and improve your brushing. There are amazing rewards you can earn, like free refills and products, target gift cards and more. And beyond the brush, you can include all sorts of other things for a complete routine, like anti-cavity toothpaste, floss, gum, mouthwash. All of this can come to you. It's brought to you. Just delivered to your home. You don't even have to go out and get it. It's delivered to your home from $5 every three months. Free shipping, and you can save money and skip the hustle and bustle of the store. So you get, again, brush heads, quip toothpaste, floss, mouthwash, gum, refills if you want for that after-dinner gum. If you want to get it on a quip, go to getquip.com slash quendor right now, and you'll get your first refill free. That's your first refill free at getquip.com slash quendor. That's G-E-T-Q-U-I-P dot com slash quendor. Quip, the good habits company. Also, today we're brought to you by Ritual. Speaking of taking care of your mouth, take care of your body too. Ritual is a clean, vegan-friendly multivitamin that's formulated with high-quality nutrients and bioavailable forms your body can actually use. You're not going to find sugars, GMOs, major allergens, synthetic fillers, artificial colorants, all that garbage. It ain't going to be in there. Plus, it has a fresh taste and a, and a fresh smell when you open up the little capsule the bottle whatever it is and you it, you can smell it immediately it smells fresh a delayed release capsule design also makes it easy to take your vitamins i use ritual i get it sent to me every single month i just in the morning wake up take them with my breakfast good to go for the day it is super simple super easy and it actually is a multivitamin that i can feel good about there's no shady extras and it exists in a way that I can like look up what's in it every time. Like, I know where my boron is coming from. I know where my folates are coming from. Magnesium? That's from Utah. Like I can just look it up. It's right there. And you can look yours up too because they have a one-of-a-kind visible supply chain. And Ritual is available for women, men, and teens. Ritual multivitamins are scientifically developed to help support whatever different stage of life you're in. Your multivitamins are delivered to your door every month with free shipping, always. You can start, you can snooze, or cancel your subscription at any time. I actually, when I was gone overseas, put a little snooze on mine, and, and then, you know, it came a few weeks later. And if you don't love Ritual within your first month, they'll refund your first order. It's that simple. So get your key nutrients without all the BS. Ritual's offering you right now 10% off your first three months. Go to ritual.com slash cox. That's ritual, R-I-T, UAL.com slash Cox to get 10% off your first three months. All right, let's go to chapter seven. Let's go. I, what words did I say? Chapter, chapter seven. Oh boy, which card door? Uh, hey, how's it going? Uh, <laughs> Not well. Some... Apparently, I can't talk anymore. Hey, can we get somebody to check on that guy? I don't think he's, <laughs> I don't think he's doing too hot. Um,. Yeah, I'm, uh, I mean, there's traffic out there, you know, it's going to be picking up with the holiday season right around the corner. I'm here to tell you, though, that the McRib is back. <laughs> That's right, folks, we've been getting your tweets, we've been getting all that, the McRib is back, and uh, keep tweeting. We still need a secret menu designed by everybody. Uh, whoever wants to do it, we, you will get a mention here because, yeah, that'd be cool. Back to you. That'd be because that'd be cool. <laughs> All right, let's go to s weather. <laughs> we were about to go to sports for a minute. Yeah, we're going struggling. to s weather. <laughs> uh, weather time. We got a request for Bisbee, Arizona, home to the Copper Queen Hotel, which is allegedly haunted and has been featured on at least two paranormal investigation shows, third season of Ghost Hunters, sixth season of Ghost Adventures. And also where the Bisbee riots of 1919 happened. Whoa. Bisbee, Arizona. The photo of Bisbee, Arizona. The first one. The Wikipedia one. Looks like it was taken in 1906. Oh my <laughs> it god, is, it does. <laughs> it is an old looking photo. Yeah, that is, that is a cowboy ghost town or something. Yeah, what's crazy about this is every photo makes it look like it is a ghost town. It really does. They're taking photos. There's another photo I'm looking at, and it's just the street. 
and there's nothing on the street. There's one person. <laughs> in fact, every photo I'm looking at, there's no one on the street. Actually, I found one photo where there's cars. Still no people. <laughs> <laughs> What is, is this, happening in this stuff? I want to go here see if anyone actually lives in Bisbee. This looks like a place you'd go where you're like, can I get one sarsaparilla, please? I'm like, I got to go old Jimbo sarsaparilla saloon. This looks like a place you could find a good sarsaparilla. It says on here, according to budgettravel.com, it is the number two spot on 10 coolest small towns in America. Huh. That's... That's actually pretty, that's pretty high. <laughs> you think about it. Two hours southeast of Tucson. Uh, they say it's hilly. And once you get there, rewarded with a living portrait of the Old West. <laughs> Don't know if that's a reward. <laughs> Various boutiques and galleries flourish amid restored Victorian homes, old saloons, and the Brewery, Gul brewery Gulch District. Ooh, now that seems fun. That does. Once the stopping grounds of gamblers and prostitutes. Ah, oh, not anymore. Man, yeah, the Copper Queen <laughs> Hotel, the oldest continually operating hotel in the state, dating back over a century. The Shandy Dell, a collection of nine revamped retro trailers. What? The Killer Bee Guy, a specialist in insects who's often featured on TV. He has a shop where he sells honey. The Killer Bee Guy? What? Killer Bee Guy? What is Crendor? What is this place? I'm going to send you a link to the Shady Dell. All right, dude. I can't tell. It looks like a rest, like a series of restaurants, but the website is not very, <laughs> like, what the, it's like a bus. I can't tell if this is a place you would stay. There's Vintage no Trailer way. Court has been sought after destination for over three decades. Dot's Diner serves savory breakfast, mouthwatering burgers. But what is it? What am I booking? Book now. Yeah, what are you booking? Am, am, am I renting a trailer? <gasps> You're renting a trailer. Oh, what? I see. What the? Huh. This is... But you're renting things like a 1950s trailer that looks like it's from the 50s? On Inside and Out? So confused. <laughs> yeah, I don't know. This is just... Huh. Meanwhile, there's also KillerBeeGuy.com. This one. <laughs> Man is selling desert honey. Wild <laughs> desert honey with a bee that looks like he's going to kick your ass. That is a killer bee right there. Also, this whole jar of pollen that he sells, that's one of the few things I'm allergic to. That jar right there, that would kill me probably. <laughs> just a full pollen just... jar. A pound of pollen? That's it. I'm dead. Bee pollen, one pound, forty bucks. <laughs> why would you? Why would you buy bee pollen? I don't know. I don't. I don't. Hold on. What can you use bee pollen for? <laughs> <laughs> what is bee pollen used for? Allergies. What? One well, of most common uses for bee pollen is management of seasonal allergies. What? What? Bee pollen may help lower cholesterol, liver health, osteoporosis, interactions. What does interactions mean? That is... Interactions? <laughs> it just says interactions, period. <laughs> Anti-inflammatory properties, antioxidants, wound healing? Just straight up wound healing? You know, wound healing. <laughs> bee pollen smoothies? Overnight oats with berries and bee pollen? What the... Bee pollen power balls? I don't. I've never in my life did I think this is where we'd be today. I'm just like, <laughs> bee pollen. Be I can't believe it. I need to know what interactions means. Just interactions? Oh, it also says it's good for acne. This seems like this is this it seems fake. like this a is, lot. It can't be good for everything. There's no way. Bee pollen apotherapeutic. What's an apotherapeutic? I guess. I mean, this is a. What is this? this is a medical journal from 2015. Oh, interactions is possible side effects if it interacts with anything. Oh, uh, I see. 
I don't know why it says on the Google page interactions period like that's it. Like interactions <laughs> will happen. <laughs> you can have interactions with everything. Yeah. How much bee pollen should you eat daily? What the hell? There's no amount, but you might want to start with one fourth a tablespoon and gradually increase to two tablespoons a day. I am I missing out on like a health thing? This reminds. Remember when we had the chlorophyll? <laughs> <laughs> yes. I this feel reminds like this me of just... yeah, some sort of BS. <laughs> yeah, so let's take your chlorophyll. Take your chlorophyll and add some bee pollen to it. That's like that lady I heard at the restaurant years ago be like, I heard Dr. Oz said if I eat an almond a day, I'll be living the good life. It's like One uh, almond one a day almond. is such a crazy amount of anything. Yeah. If I have one, one almond, <laughs> like, all right, Nana. A singular enjoy. almond. Right? That's crazy to me. Yeah. Um, okay, sure. So anyway, uh, 65 degrees <laughs> for skies. Uh, currently uh, 65, humidity 22%, pressure 29.96 inches, 10 mile visibility, you got 8 mile an hour winds going to the northeast, dew points at 26, UV index 0, and moon phase is a waxing crescent, 6.41 a.m. sunrise, 5.25 p.m. sunset. You got a 10-day forecast, 73, uh, cloudy, 75, mostly sunny, and then 70 and sunny, 71 sunny, 70 sunny, 71 sunny, and 73 mostly sunny, so pretty much just sunny and 70. That's not bad. I mean, uh, I mean at right now, it's probably the best time to go, I would imagine, yeah. and the other time of the year, it's probably 8,000 degrees. Oh, yeah, you probably melt. They'll uh they'll turn you into sarsaparilla that they have serve we, at the old we, saloon. Have we reviewed this town before? I feel like maybe we just keep getting sent weird places out in the the southwest because a lot of it looks the same as places we reviewed before, um, where it's like in the middle of nowhere. There's a little tiny house. And that little tiny house has metal artwork out front. Yeah, and there yeah, you know that's just a lot of places. Yeah, I mean agreed, <laughs> especially in Arizona. Yeah, it was like Death Valley we did. There's uh, there's a couple other ones we definitely did. There's that one with the coyote. Or not coyote. It was the, uh, the shamans and shit. They were like walking the forest. Remember that one? <laughs> yes. That That's one. what I'm saying. <laughs> I Man, I'm missing out. If we have any, like, you know, people out there who, who want to take us on tours of stuff, I'm down. I or will bee go. pollen experts. Yeah. <laughs> I don't know about that. That might be <laughs> the death of me. But. Yeah. You know, I will take I will take an expert to like let me know the Mun Cheese Shop. The Mun Cheese is that like cheese? Yeah, except it's Munchies, oh. but it's spelled M U N Cheese, but it's like Munchies though. It's, it's clever. It's clever. Yeah. By the way, uh, I think we're only like a week or two away from our uh, nine year anniversary for this podcast. Is that true? Should we do a thing? Yeah, probably. I mean, we should we do a call-in <laughs> show? Uh, I mean, <laughs> we would that do be that. out of control if we were like call in right now? That would be out of control. We'll set up like a Discord thing, and people can just wait there, and then someone will pick the call, and that person will be like, "Hello, am I on?" And we'll just record it. That would be funny. That would be amazing. Like nine years. I don't <laughs> know how we'd pull that off. I don't either. I think we've mentioned doing this before, and then we don't do it, probably because it takes so much time be. to set up. And then yeah, we're like, it's ah, too much whatever. effort. <laughs> what if we just do what we always do, and then <laughs> that's what we do? Yeah, usually we'll just forget until it's like, oh, yeah, today's the day. Oh, yeah. well. <laughs> Move it on. <laughs> either way. That's the weather. Okay, let's go to sports. Sports. Uh, big sports news going on. So over in uh, the NFL, we had our NFL games. We had the uh, Raiders lose to the Giants. That's a big one. Uh, Falcons beat the Saints. Jaguars beat the Bills 9-6. to Don't know how that happened. Uh, Browns beat the Bengals. Patriots beat the Panthers. Broncos beat the Cowboys. Another crazy game. Ravens beat the Vikings. Dolphins beat the Texans. Eagles lost to the Chargers, the Chiefs beat the Packers, Cardinals beat the 49ers, and the Rams are currently beating the Titans with Bears Steelers coming up tomorrow, or I guess technically tonight. Yeah. Uh, 
Packers game. It was Jordan Love's first game because Aaron Rodgers likes to, you know, like <laughs> use crystals to heal himself or something. I don't know. <laughs> uh, listen, just, <laughs> just, just want him to throw the football. All right, that's all I want. Uh, I was going to ask you about that this week because, uh, you know, Aaron Rodgers. Yeah. What are your? I mean, <laughs> he's crazy. Like, <laughs> he's a crazy person, but he's definitely the best, one of the best quarterbacks. But uh, just, I don't know. Just, just get the shot. Yeah, just get the shot, and the, you know, three billion people have done it, and then you can play football, and we don't have to do this, and then we don't have to do it. It, it is like a crazy thing to me that that is the line. He's like, I'm yeah. not going to do it. Yeah. The worst part is he, like, lied, being like, I'm immunized. Like, he, he word played it, you know. That's like, oh, what are you doing? But uh, it's... I was cheering for the new uh, Jordan Love he played today. I don't think he did bad, but he didn't do good. It was kind of like a, it's a hard environment. You're like on the road against Kansas City and like, hey, oh, they almost came back. Special teams sucked ass. They're actually the worst part of it. We could have been tied at the end. Uh, what's our, think, uh, uh, what's our, our, our Minshew update? Minshew actually threw like two passes last week. Um, right. But like, was it good? Uh, I mean, he hasn't really, he's, he threw two <laughs> passes. He completed both of them for 11 yards. That was last week. This week, the Eagles lost again. I mean, at this point, the Eagles are three and six, and Jalen Hurts keeps doing mediocre. I mean, I would just, I would throw the Minshew in there. See what he does. Ah, agreed. That's what I'm saying. Get the man in. Yeah. Like, let's go. He could probably lead this team to the playoffs with how the NFC East is, <laughs> like, the NFC East is just awful. Best, best case scenario? Aaron Rodgers is out, Minshew's in. Packers that way, you, you'd trade. have to care about Minshew. <laughs> Dude, if Packers could trade for Minshew, they can't because the trade deadline's over. But, oh, my God, that'd be fantastic. <laughs> that'd be fantastic. Um, so those are all those. Uh, and the NBA, actually pretty tight race over in the NBA, even though we're early in the season still. The uh, 76ers up the top. And you got the Heat, the Nets, the Wizards, the Bulls. And the Cavs, uh, so I've been enjoying the watch basketball. Uh, and then in the West, you got Golden State, Utah, Dallas, Phoenix, Memphis, Denver, and uh, some other teams. Worst teams right now, the Pelicans, the Rockets, the Pistons are all very bad. Uh, and then in NHL news, <laughs> Carolina's at the top. Florida's at the top, St. Louis at the top, and Edmonton up at the top. Those are your best hockey teams. How are the Kraken doing? Uh, The Seattle Kraken, the newest hockey team, are in last place. Okay. That's expected. <laughs> uh, so, that's, uh, that's pretty much sports. Okay. What is our fact of the day? Big fact of the day. Wait, hold on. There's a... I forgot about a sports story. What? Well, this is kind of like a news story, but it's also a sports story. I could just save it for the end. Okay. All right, well, we'll save it. Um, all right, fact of the day. A London tomb is supposedly a time machine or teleportation chamber. Wait, what? That's what this says. I don't know if this is a fact. <laughs> I don't know what I don't know what this means. Let's find out. London's Brompton Cemetery inspires some strange beliefs. It's the final resting place of Hannah Cortoy, who had a well-known respect for ancient Egyptians' astrological and perhaps mystical knowledge. She's buried here along with two of her daughters in a massive 20-foot granite mausoleum that includes a pyramid peak and a bronze door decorated with Egyptian hieroglyphs. The entryway also features a keyhole, but the key that unlocks it was lost, which, along with Cortoy's history, sparked the tomb's peculiar reputation. Because no one can get inside to confirm or deny superstitious suspicion, there's a local legend that says it isn't a tomb at all, but a time machine. However... Why? What? However... Wh how do we get there? <laughs> historian Stephen Coates told Mental Floss, quote, it's not a time machine. It's a teleportation chamber. <laughs> How? What? Crendor, what? <laughs> we 
We just became Chaluminati in like five seconds. How, how, how did they? I might bring this up for Chaluminati. Hey. What is this article? How does this work? I don't know. Just opening it may not establish. What the shit? I just clicked on it. There's like a whole thing on it being a time machine. Here, I should, I should come on again and I'll bring this as my story this time. You should. <laughs> you, need to, you need to be our guest for this one. I don't know what this means. Yeah, this is crazy. There's a whole article on it. There's like I thought we were gonna get a fact, not whatever the hell this is. <laughs> There's like a picture of the door. It does kind of look crazy. It. I mean, it just looks like a door, though. It does. You're but... telling me inside that door is a teleportation device, or a time machine. <laughs> right, or a time machine. <laughs> <laughs> One of the two. Uh, yes. One of those. <laughs> um, so I don't know. How is that a fact? I don't know. <laughs> <laughs> That's what I'm trying to figure out. Huh. Well, here's another fact. A fortune cookie okay. company once foretold the lottery, resulting in 110 winners. In That's pretty funny, actually. Yeah. In 2005. That's like um. <laughs> Uh, a Powerball drawing at a shocking 110 second place winners, all who attributed their luck to a fortune cookie. Uh, they said they distrib distributed it in Long Island City. It just so happens they correctly foretold five of the six winning numbers. Huh. That reminds me of when Lost was a big thing that was on TV. Mm. There was, uh, you know, the Lost had like the lottery numbers in the show. Yeah. Four, eight, whatever the hell it was. And... I guess because it was very popular at the time, people were playing those lottery numbers. And somewhere, I don't remember where I read this, but those are the numbers that came up. But because so many people played it, the, like the grand prize was divided among thousand people. Hmm. So it's like... So yeah, I guess that stuff happens. That's crazy. Like imagine just winning and you guys split it with like a thousand people. <laughs> yeah. You think like, yes, and then you realize everyone else has won too. <laughs> Um, so that's your facts of the day. <laughs> All right. What's our big news story? All right. So uh, I was going to split these up, but okay. There's two big news stories. One's crazy. One's just kind of a thing. I'll just start with the thing. New Zealand potato named Doug just might be the world's biggest. Can I see Doug? Sure can. I'm waiting to see Doug. Here is Might Doug. just be the world's biggest. Whoa! <laughs> that is a... You know what? I like that, but that's a honker. That's that guy. That is a honker. It's like the size of a big cat. It is. It's a 17-pound potato. Uh, Colin and Donna Craig Brown were weeding their garden in New Zealand when Colin's hoe struck something huge beneath the soil surface. As the couple knelt down and began digging around the object, Colin wondered if it was some kind of strange fungal growth or a giant puffball. After Colin pried out his, his garden fork, he scratched away a bit of the skin and tasted it. A potato. <laughs> <laughs> How'd you taste I bet he sounded just like that. A potato. A potato. <laughs> we couldn't believe it, Donna said. It was huge. Not exactly pretty. Donna describes its appearance as more of an ugly mutant potato. <laughs> <laughs> I think it looks great. Yeah, I think uh, it's just a big potato. What do you want it to do? Yeah, it's just like, a, like you know, he's a big boy. You got, why you got a problem with that? Yeah. It's quite possibly the largest potato on record. When the couple lugged it into their garage, put it on the, sale, the scale, it weighed 7.9 kilograms or 17.4 pounds. That's equal to a couple of sacks of regular potatoes or one small dog. In the weeks since their unusual find, the couple's potato has become something of a celebrity around their small farm near Hamilton. They've named the potato Doug after the way it was unearthed. Very <laughs> clever. I <laughs> that love that. That is pretty good. And they even built a small cart to tow Doug around. We put a hat on him. We put him on Facebook, take him for a walk, give him some sunshine. It's all about fun. <laughs> it's amazing what entertains people. You're telling me. A more That's official so way. <laughs> <laughs> I love it. <laughs> uh, current Guinness World Record for the heaviest potato is 2011 from Britain, which was just under 5 kilograms. They've applied Doug to the Guinness Book of World Records. They're waiting to hear back. I imagine he'll win that one easy. Uh, 
Collins said he doesn't have any secret gardening tips. Usually they throw a bunch of cow manure and straw into their garden and see what happens. They've been growing well, and that's cucumbers. what happened. Yeah. <laughs> uh, it's one of nature's little pleasant surprises. Doug hasn't proven an easy charge to look after as the couple showed the potato off. He began drying out and losing weight. Mold started growing from Doug. Ew. Uh, he's cleaned it up as best he could and put the potato in the freezer where it remains. So, any plans to turn Doug into potato vodka at some point? Nice. Now that's... that's I want a good. bottle of Doug. <laughs> <laughs> Hook me up. Hook me up with a bottle of Doug, please. Uh, well, now this is the this is the big story. This is this one's gonna blow okay. you away. I'm ready for it. <laughs> Doug pretty much was there already, but yeah. all right. This that we had a wholesome story. This is the this is the Cox and Crendor special. Oh no, monkey, <laughs> belonging to Texas special team football coach's stripper girlfriend bites child on Halloween. <laughs> Holy shit. <laughs> that is a Cox and Crendor instant classic. <laughs> this was this at first you just you hear the word monkey and you're like this is going to be good. And then it just it just keeps going. It's the gift that keeps on giving. <laughs> that headline has it all. Yeah. Wow. Um, so here we go. <laughs> There are stories made for the internet, and then there's the story of a pet monkey belonging to a stripper who goes by Pole Assassin, biting a kid <laughs> on Halloween. No! Her name is not Pole Assassin. It is. And Pole Assassin is dating Texas special teams coach Jeff Banks, who reportedly left his wife and kids to be with Pole Assassin. Oh my god. I, I, I am... Okay... <laughs> <laughs> I am not saying I've I googled Jeff Banks because I want to know who Jeff Banks was, which now I see him. It's already funny, but more oh, yeah. importantly, now I've looked up Pole Assassin, and let me tell you, equally funny. Yeah, and I now see the monkey even funnier. <laughs> oh yeah, no, it's this is fantastic. So. According to Texas football photographer, Jeff Banks' girlfriend, the pole assassin, has this pet monkey, Gia, who performs pole dancing routines with her. The monkey reportedly bit a kid and had to be pried off the child during a Halloween incident. Daniel Banks, it's still unclear if they're married, not that it really matters, posted over the weekend on social media inviting kids over to enjoy a haunted house in Maze. There's no mention of a pet monkey, and it appears the monkey wasn't supposed to be part of the festivities. Monday night, Danny took to Twitter where she explained how the child got into off-limits areas. I had a haunted house on one side gated off, she wrote before Pole Assassin explained she had no idea the boy had been bitten until the neighborhood doctor told her about the bite. The neighborhood oh doctor? So he just like, <laughs> so it was several, like, I've, how did the doctor find out? Did they go to the doctor later and the doctor's like, what's this bite? Yeah, I don't. Like they also say the neighborhood doctor. Like we're living in like the fifteen hundreds. You know, like the neighborhood doctor. In some in town. places, some places they are. <laughs> yeah. Uh. Quote. No parent have contacted me about it. Danny wrote. When asked if the monkey is vaccinated, she explained how the monkey is up to date on her shots and it is an emotional support animal who is not to be touched. I uh, am looking at sc screenshots, photos, whatever these are. Of her with this monkey on the dance floor <laughs> at strip clubs. <laughs> <laughs> oh, yeah. <I> see. <laughs> yep. uh, no one is allowed to touch her, Danny shot back. Is your mind blown yet? Now let's get to the pet monkey having a role in pole assassin strip club shows. <laughs> <laughs> the monkey, according to Danny, gives high fives on command, and you can definitely see that from the content published on their Instagram page. Uh, she's not just some random stripper. She appeared on the Jerry Springer show in 2017. Uh, I was going to tell you that, that uh, I have a actual, there's a tweet posted out in 2017 by the Jerry Springer show, and she responded like, thanks for having me, y'all. <laughs> there's something so sweet and innocent about it you know what i mean like she's like hey thanks thanks for having me on 
The best part is at this is what at Jerry Springer show tweeted at pole underscore assassin, which I don't think is this person's at pole assassin <laughs> equals hashtag goat. Is this the greatest pole dance uh, to ever hit our stage? Hashtag Jerry Springer. <laughs> I can't believe Jerry Springer was on TV when I was in high school. Yeah, I can't believe this is from 2017. And it's he's still still like. <laughs> <laughs> That's what I heard too when they said that. I was like, hold on a second, Jerry Springer's still on the air? <laughs> it's crazy. Incredible. Um also she says an emotional support monkey, but he's like giving high fives to people. Yeah, he's emotionally supporting me. <laughs> oh, I guess that adds up. Yeah. I love this um, guy. Yeah, there's a lot of footage of her high fiving this this monkey. <laughs> uh she responded to a question on Twitter about the allegation. No one was viciously attacked. This is a lie. A whole lie. She was not a part of any haunted house. The kid did not have permission to be on the other side of my property. That's it. I'm sure a few of you out there have questions. Probably like, Jesse, do you approve of this coach leaving his family for a stripper and a pet monkey? Yes. Yes, I do. As a person who has dealt with children... Pet monkey's way better. Stripper pet monkey versus a bunch of complaining kids? I know what I would choose. <laughs> that is true. You probably would choose the monkey. I mean, in this day and age, we're abolishing monkey Mondays all across the nation. <laughs> it's like, come on. Every day I'd choose that. Look at his face. This guy. <laughs> Look at this monkey. Hold on. Let me show you this image. Open image and new tab. Look at this monkey. <laughs> <laughs> that does look like a, a sassy monkey. Yeah, right? I want that guy to be my friend. I want to be that dude. I want to be in his life. <laughs> Man, this is... This is a top Another three. episode is what it is. <laughs> <laughs> this is another episode. Yep. All right. Well, that's it for us. Thank you so much for listening or watching or ever enjoying this podcast. Crendor, hit him with the socials. We've got socials. YouTube.com slash Cox and Crendor podcast. Find all the podcasts up over there. Uh, you can check them all out. We've got uh, YouTube.com slash Cox and Crendor. That's where all the uh, bop da bop bops are. Uh, the animations. That's what they're called. Uh, you can also <laughs> find us on iTunes, SoundCloud, Spotify. We're all over. Uh, also, check out our main stuff. we got YouTube.com slash Jesse Cox. YouTube.com slash Crendor. Uh, I've been doing some YouTube shorts. Look at that. Mamma Mia. Uh, we got Twitter, Jesse Cox. Twitter, Crendor. Twitch TV, Jesse Cox. Twitch TV, Crendor. Facebook, Jesse Cox. Facebook, Crendor. Instagram, Notorious Cox. Instagram, Crendor was taken. Patreon, Jesse Cox. Patreon, Crendor. And, uh... Okay. Thanks again. We'll see y'all next time. And as always... Shake the rhino. Shake, shake the rhino. Don't shake the rhino. <laughs> High five the monkey. <laughs> High five the monkey. High five the monkey. High five the monkey. I'm still shaking. <laughs> <Do we continue? laughs>